Next, we're going to talk about collecting sales tax. Just a little brief, a bit of a refresher about your items. In QuickBooks, if you're using QuickBooks Financial, as, again, as a refresher, we want to click on the item list just to verify that you have your items set up at the bottom. Of course, they're always at the bottom on an unsorted list. And you also want to make sure that in your point of sale, that your, that your settings for your um, sales tax under company are set up correctly according to the same sales tax codes. Once you've verified that all of your sales taxes are, are set up correctly, then that's going to make a sale. Now, there's, let's pull up maybe just sell a, let's change something different. Let's sell a polo shirt um, that we don't have any quantity on. That's all right. We'll assume that we have quantity and we're going to sell this anyways. Um, so we have a polo shirt, and perhaps this is going to be delivered or shipped to another county. And again, you have to know your local rates in your own state. Um, if, you, if your state does charge tax, it's really important. So when I'm talking about these scenarios, I'm really talking about Florida and you know, other states that require the destination county to be taxed. For example, if this, you know, in the county that, that we're in is Hillsborough County in Florida, and let's say I'm shipping this out to a customer in Pinellas County, you want to make sure that you identify the county correctly. It just so happens that Pinellas and Hillsborough have the same tax rate, but um, not, all tax, not all counties have the same tax rate in our state. When you want to change the tax rate, there's two ways you could do it. You can either choose a customer that has a predefined tax rate, which I'll come back to, or you can add, there's a button that you can add on your side button bar to change tax location. You can add that. It's just a more convenient way to, to um, be able to change it. When you click on change tax location, you can either make it an exempt sale or you can change it to one of these counties. I'm going to choose Pinellas because I believe this, um, the customer was set up as a, uh, as I think it was Pasco or something. So here's, here's now that the, the tax rate didn't change, but you can see that the tax code changed to Pinellas County. The other thing that you can do is under the customer, it would go by the customers. So yes, we're going to apply that, um, that what was it, the price level. And now it's saying that this, this customer is associated to the Hillsborough tax rate. Do you want to change it? Yes. So now this is not only the friends and family, but it's now the Hillsborough, it's, of course, it's a friends and family discount, but then it's now the local um, tax rate of Hillsborough County, which is our standard rate. So again, those are different ways that you can uh, assign the different tax rates to a sale. And also, if you had somebody, that, a customer, for example, that was, that was exempt, you make sure that in the customers, let me go into the customer list, and let's say I'll edit this particular customer. So in the customer, under the sales tax, you want to make sure that they're exempt, they're listed as exempt. That way, when if you were to choose Sarah Lee, let me go back into that in progress. Oh, and this is, by the way, in the, the in progress. Um, this is one that we had left open, we didn't put it on hold, so it's considered in progress. It'll quickly let us go back to that sales receipt, and if we typed in Sarah Lee now, it'll change it to Sarah Lee. Um, we'll say no to adding this in, um, customer to the rewards program, and then you can see now that it's exempt. So keep in mind that, you know, again, you do need to know your tax rates for your state, and then apply them correctly in point of sale. I have had customers in the past that have tri-state uh, coverage, and they do have to have, like, they might be in the corner of a state um, that they covered across the different state lines, so you also have to keep that in mind. If you work in other states, you have to know those tax rates as well, because most states require you, when you're doing business in those states, to collect on behalf of those states. It can get really uh, tricky and hairy, but once you're done, and we're going to click on, uh, we're just going to take this as a cash sale and save it. And we're going to click on save only. Now what I want to do is I want to actually update QuickBooks because, again, most of you looking at this should be or are using the QuickBooks Financial as the back end. And although you can pull a report, for example, we can pull under um, sales, we do have a sales tax category summary, and you can specify the date range, and you can see that the sales tax codes are broken down. We have the state and we have the, um, the different county, the discretionary rates, like the 6% and the 1%. So this is a good report, even if you're not using QuickBooks Financial. Um, but we also have, over in the QuickBooks Financial, we have the sales tax report, the sales tax liability report, and let's just change it to this date range, 10, 24, 
13 through 10, 31, 13. And you can see in here that it's broken out correctly because you had it identified correctly coming over from point of sale to QuickBooks. It shows you the discretionary rates and it sums up the 6% into one number. So it is a little bit easier, in my opinion, to have this run right out of QuickBooks. And of course, this sales tax is accumulated in your sales tax liability account in QuickBooks so that it makes it easier to use the process um, of paying that, ta that tax right out of QuickBooks. And that concludes collecting sales tax.